Hello everyone and welcome back once again to another Law Thunder. This week we're taking a look at another vehicle in the German tech tree in the form of the SD KFC 234 series of armoured cars. Historically, the vehicle came into being because of the restrictions of the Treaty of Versailles on Germany. Since armoured cars weren't subject to the rules of this treaty, Germany could build as many of them as they needed. Armoured cars had proven to be highly successful during the invasions of Poland and France, but existing designs had shown their flaws. The 234 series was the successor to the earlier Schwerer Panzer Schwerwagen 231, which would feature better protection and heavier armament, amongst numerous other minor improvements. A 1940 specification required a car capable of operating in a tropical climate. Numerous manufacturers were tasked with the development, with Bussing developing the body, Daimler-Benz and Schaichau the turret, and Tatra the engine and the overall design. By 1942, the project changed to require a vehicle capable of working in extreme temperatures, resulting in the installation of a more conventional air-cooled diesel engine. The resulting vehicle was a eight-wheeled, steered light armoured car with six forward and reversed gears. A second rear-facing driver's seat meant it could quickly change position during heated combat or if damage was received, an immediate retreat was required. Traction was provided across all eight wheels, giving it incredible reliability on numerous surfaces, namely the harsh conditions of the Russian front and the rain-soaked grounds of Normandy and beyond. The 234 series had four variants produced between 1943 and 1945. The 234-1 featured an open-top turret equipped with a 2cm KWK-30 L55 autocannon and coaxial MG-34. Around 200 of these were produced. In War Thunder, it's a Tier 1 event vehicle that excels in the ambush and harassment role due to its high speed and rapid fire 20mm gun. Though poorly armoured, it can navigate maps quickly to reach advantageous firing positions early on and capture points. The main drawback here is its low ammo count per magazine at 10 rounds only, and the open top turret can lead to early deaths for your crew from artillery fire and machine gun strafing. The 234-2 would come about between 1943 and 44, and is possibly the most commonly known variant. It features a 5cm KWK 39L60 gun and MG42, and a fully enclosed turret meant to be used on the then prototype VK1602 Leopard light tank. Despite being the more famous of the series, only 101 of these were ever built. The second model is the Tech Tree variant, with a bit more punch in War Thunder. The 50mm main gun means it can use its speed to quickly flank enemy tanks and make hit and run attacks, becoming a real pain to the enemy and forcing them to divide their attention. It's recommended to take this on urban maps over desert or muddy terrain as the speed here is reduced quite quickly and your options are limited then in how to deploy this vehicle. The 234-3 model was once again an open top vehicle but this time equipped with a 7.5cm K51 L24 cannon. It was intended to be used as a fire support unit and not to engage enemy armour. 88 were built in 1944. In War Thunder the 3 model is another tier 1 event vehicle. Compared to the 1 variant, this thing is brutal. Capable of using heat rounds and using the same gun as the early Panzer IV, it can knock out most opponents it engages at BR 1.7 in realistic. Again, shoot and scoop is a tactic here, as it retains the same speed advantages but now with far more punch than either the 1 or the 2 variants. Still, 12.7mm machine gun fire can kill you, so head on engagements aren't really recommended. Flanking is key. The final variant, though, historically was the 234-4, featuring the 7.5cm Pac-40 L46 gun, once again in an open-topped configuration. The model was the upper limit that the chassis could bear, but was also the most deadly, 89 being built before 1944 and the end of the war in 1945. The 4 model is another event vehicle, though it's a BR 3.0 in realistic. The most powerful of the series, it can deal incredible damage even when it gets up-tiered. The speed here is key again as you can very quickly find ambush spots or flank routes and knock out enemy tanks in the early stages of a match. It suffers all of the usual drawbacks as the other models with its poor armour and open top turret, reduced speed in off-road environments, but with proper use it can cause a real upset victory for your team. All of the models historically would see combat on both the east and western fronts and by all accounts they gave a good showing. In the right hands they could cause a lot of damage and quickly move away from return fire and was considered one of the best armoured fighting vehicles of the war. And that wraps up the SDKFC 234 series. I'd like to thank uh, Gaijin for giving me temporary access to the event vehicles for this uh, video. And thank you everybody for watching. 
Hope you all have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.